the channel today I am coming to you from my kitchen once again I feel like I'm doing a lot of filming in the kitchen these days but I think I'm just it felt very fitting for today's video because we're gonna be talking about pans cookware non-toxic options we're gonna be getting into it so as you would have seen from the title of today's video I wanted to start like a little mini series about non-toxic home swaps I am by no means like the best at this not trying to do everything perfectly. In fact, there's probably a few things still in our house that I don't really want to swap over or I haven't like found the best alternative yet. So I'm gonna come straight out and say that I don't try to be perfect with this stuff, but there are a few things that we've successfully switched over and some things that I think are just like more of a priority than other things. So today I wanted to specifically talk about cookware and pans because I do feel that if you're transitioning your home towards using, you know, more clean products and reducing your toxic burden within the home, Pans and cookware are like one of the number one because you're using them so regularly. If you're anything like me, I'm cooking on my pans minimum twice a day, breakfast, dinner. And because we know that using non-stick pans and Teflon can be really damaging to our health, specifically when we are overheating non-stick pans and when we are scratching them up, which can happen very easily when you're using any kind of utensil on a non-stick pan. And I don't feel like many of us are realistically changing over our pans frequently enough so I know like for myself back in the day when we had non-stick pans they would get a bit scratched up and no I probably wasn't turning them over and getting new ones every time they got a scratch but particularly old scratched up Teflon pans are going to be an issue when they're overheated just with releasing toxic gases and fumes into the air and ideally we want to make sure that the air quality within our homes is as good as it can be especially if you have young children I feel like as soon as you have kids like you just become very hyper aware of all of this kind of stuff yeah so I thought I would jump straight into today's video and talk through some of the pans cookware things that we use instead of non-stick because it is a journey it is a journey trying to figure out what to use instead and trying to find options that are effective that work um, that don't leave you with a big mess to clean up because just like finding a pan that's actually going to be non-stick or figuring out how to use pans in a way that's going to um, create the least amount of stickage is tricky. So we're gonna talk all about it today. We are gonna get straight into the alternatives to our Teflon. And first up, I am going to talk about this beautiful, beautiful pan right here. So this is our newest addition to the collection. This is our stainless steel pan. But we got this around Christmas time and this has become pretty much our go-to pan at the moment. So stainless steel is a really nice alternative to your Teflon. If you treat it correctly, it's going to be fairly non-stick. It's not going to be as beautifully non-stick as your non-stick pans. I don't think there's much that's really going to like super rival that. But if you use stainless steel correctly, you're going to reduce the amount of stickage during your cooking. So what does that mean? That means making sure that you heat your pan up to temperature before you start cooking on it then adding in your oil and then putting on your meat. So you have to have a little bit more patience when you're using stainless steel. You can't just like turn the heat on and then whack, whack your stuff straight in there. It's going to be a sticking nightmare. You also have to make sure that you're using sufficient amounts of oil. So that is potentially one of the drawbacks when it comes to stainless steel and cast iron is that you're gonna be relying on using oil to get that, that good surface for cooking, which I'm not too fussed about. I'm not someone that is personally phobic of using like good fats. So we use a lot of ghee and butter. I'm not really concerned about that. I know that for other people, you know maybe if you're into weight loss or any of these other areas that you don't want to use a whole lot of fat that might be an issue for you but in general yeah a really nice cooking service really great for all of your general cooking for doing like steaks any kind of protein sauces so that's also worth mentioning you can do like your tomato based sauces in a stainless steel pan whereas you might not want to do that for example in like a cast iron pan due to leaching although I should mention on that topic again that there are maybe some concerns with leaching when it comes to stainless steel particularly of nickel and chromium so it's going to depend on the grade of stainless stainless steel that you're using, how much nickel and chromium is in there, but it's also worth mentioning that I think it's by about the sixth 
use, it decreases dramatically. So the amount that's leached out over time really does reduce and it reduces quite quickly, that makes sense. So after about six times that you've used this, it's going to be doing that a whole lot less. When it comes to stainless steel, so it is heavy, you can still pick this up with one hand. Medium, kind of heavy still, not super lightweight. Although that will vary depending on the type of stainless steel pan that you buy and how many ply or like layers of stainless it has. So this is a pretty high ply, <laughs> high ply? I think it's seven ply stainless steel, which is quite high. You'll find a lot that are like three ply, which means that it should be lighter. But the case for getting like a higher ply pan is that it's going to be more durable, it's going to spread heat more evenly, like distribute it more evenly. So it's just going to be kind of like a better quality pan. So if you're looking for something that's going to last a long time, be really durable, high quality pan, I would definitely recommend this one. And then the final pro that I want to mention about stainless steel is that it is super easy to clean. There are no special cleaning instructions really for stainless steel. So you can use water, soap, a little bit of like an abrasive scrubber brush sort of thing. And you can get it really nice and clean every time after use, which is going to be different to say your cast iron pans, which I'll talk about in a bit. But if you've used cast iron, you know that it's a whole process with the cleaning. It is involved. From that aspect, we've really been loving our stainless. Before using stainless, we used a lot of cast iron and it was a pain in the butt. Stainless, really nice for cleaning, looks beautiful. Not really too much more to say about it apart from if you're cooking like scrambled eggs, I'm sure that you could get it non-stick enough to do that. However, I like to use a different pan for that which we'll talk about in a second. So but yeah, things like eggs, which is like the ultimate test of how non-stick your pan is, I do feel like that's gonna be a bit tricky and stainless. You would have to use like a buttload of oil, but I'm sure it's still doable. So moving on, we are going to talk about cast iron. So we actually threw away our last cast iron pan. We do still have this one because this is a beautiful La Creuset cast iron. Not going to be throwing that away. It'll still have its uses, but our other cast iron we actually threw out because I was just done with that. Although if you are someone who has the time and the patience and the will to work with cast iron, it's definitely still another great non-toxic option for cooking in your kitchens. So cast iron, again, can be super long lasting if you take care of it correctly. If your pan is really well seasoned, it's gonna be a super safe cooking surface. The only major leaching concerns that there might be, and it could be either a concern or it could be a good thing, depending on you as an individual, is that cast iron pans can actually enrich your food with more iron. So there's gonna be a bit of leaching of iron from the pan into the food, especially if you're, if you're cooking something that's a little bit acidic, so thinking like tomatoes, things like that, which is why I generally wouldn't cook tomatoes or acidic sauces and things like that in cast iron. But yeah, so you're gonna have more iron in the food. So if you're someone that has generally low iron, like a lot of women, you might find that that's like a helpful thing for your overall health. Or if you're a man, which, you know, many men tend to have iron overload or become overloaded in iron quite easily, then you might not really want to be cooking on cast iron. So that just might be another consideration there. And then the other points about cast iron. So it is going to take a lot more patience and work if you're doing cast iron. So number one, there's the seasoning of the pan. So that's basically where you're going to be creating this built up layer of oils. Technically, I don't know what the layer would be called, um, but you build up a nice layer on the bottom of the pan from kind of baking on oil. So it involves you seasoning the pan, putting it in the oven, heating it up, and doing that in layers to build it up. And then once you have that nice seasoning on your pan, you have to be really careful to preserve that. So it also means that when you're washing your pan, you have to be washing it in a very specific way. And this is where I just, I couldn't do it anymore personally. So you can't use soap and abrasives and things like that because you're trying to keep that seasoning intact. So a lot of the time you're just using a little bit of water, a little bit of salt. We did get it down to an art of how to clean it, but just the process was lengthy. There's a lot of oil involved. So a lot of like dirty, oily rags and things. And yeah, it just like wasn't my favorite way to do things. So we did move away from cast iron in the end. We did also have a lot of problems, again, with cooking eggs. So when seasoned properly, cast iron can be really good non-stick surface. So there's people out there that are like cooking pancakes and cooking eggs and doing everything. 
we definitely still had trouble with trying to do like eggs. It just means that you have to use like a lot of oil, a lot of butter to make it work. So that's just another consideration. I'm not trying to deter people from cast iron, but I think it's just good to know what you're kind of getting yourself into before you begin that process. There's some research involved, just trying to figure out how you do everything. And then the last thing is that obviously cast iron is quite heavy. Actually holding them both, these two are actually quite similar. Just another consideration. They're not gonna be super lightweight pans. So moving on, if I'm going to rank them in terms of which ones are the most safe, the most time tested, stainless steel, cast iron, those two are at the top of my chart. And now we're gonna move on to some more clean options, question mark. They're still like a little bit dubious in my mind. Some eco options, but kind of newer technology. So when it comes to cooking things that are just really sticky, thinking like an egg, scrambled eggs. That's really the main two. In the morning, this is the pan that I use. So this is a ceramic pan by the brand Green Life. They use another kind of supposedly non-toxic coating in their pans. So while I'm not sure if this is like the perfect option for the purpose of cooking eggs in the morning, this really works for me. So like I said, this one has a ceramic non-stick coating and it is not Teflon. So they use a different technology that is supposedly safer and healthier and doesn't release toxic fumes into the air. As I said, can't really verify if this is the perfect option, but I'm not too worried about using this in the morning just for eggs. This was one that Beck actually got me onto. If you haven't watched our channel for a long time, Beck is my sister, but she uses this one as well. I have two of them actually. We've got the kind of medium one. This one's good for doing like scrambled eggs. And this is like the baby one. That's good for doing like a single egg for Florence in the morning for breakfast. So I've got these two that I use for eggs and other sticky stuff. And what we also like about this surface is that it's like a ceramic surface and it's not very scratchable. So I'd still obviously be careful. You don't want to be using like metal utensils on this, but the surface is quite like hardy. Like it's not going to scratch super easily compared to, for example, was another option that we had by Oz Ozeri? Ozeri, which is another non-toxic, non-stick pen option so they use some other kind of surface in this which we tried for eggs as well but this surface i just found after time even though i was being really careful with how we washed it and the utensils that i was using on it it has developed some like micro scratches on the surface which is always like a bit of a red flag to me when you're cooking with anything you really just want that surface to stay intact so that you're not releasing anything harmful into the food into the air when you're cooking so a little bit more dubious about this one i also happened to drop it one day and it dinged very easily so i don't really use this pan much at all this one I got more recently and i've been using in the morning and it's been perfect you don't have to use much i don't know if i mentioned but you don't have to use much oil at all you could probably fry an egg in this and use no oil and it wouldn't stick. So I can verify that this surface is very non-stick. But yeah, so those are our fry pan options kind of listed from like the best options all the way through. The other cookware that I use quite often for like soups, stews, things like that is um, our enameled cast iron. So we have a nice big pot from Le Creuset. They are very expensive. So it's a bit of an investment piece, but these pots are just, yeah, really nice, safe, good for cooking really high temperatures when you're putting things in the oven. And yeah, don't have anything negative to say there. So yeah, those are some of the healthier options that we like to use for our cookware. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. I know that there was someone that was asking on the last video in a comment for a video like this. Let me know in the comments below what you use at the moment. Like are you team stainless steel or cast iron? Like have you fully figured out the cast iron? I'd love to know. And other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.